biographical memoir of john wesley powell eighteen thirty four to nineteen o two by william morris davis section one john wesley powell john wesley powell was in more senses than one a scientific frontiersman his life reveals the energetic working of a vigorous and independent personality not trammeled by traditional methods and not so deeply versed in the history the content and the technique of the sciences as to be guided by them but impelled to the rapid discovery of new principles by the inspiration of previously unexplored surroundings his life shows us further how a man of exceptional power rises suddenly in an otherwise undistinguished lineage and how he surmounts the limiting associations of early years less through the opportunity provided by others than through opportunities opened by his own individual enterprise for the satisfaction of inborn interests early life powell the fourth of nine children was born of english parents at mount morris in the genesee valley of western new york on march twenty fourth eighteen thirty four his father joseph powell a methodist preacher and his mother mary dean powell had come to the united states a short time before the family moved from new york to jackson ohio in eighteen thirty eight thirty nine to South Grove, Wisconsin, in 1846, and eventually to Illinois, settling first at Bonus Prairie in 1851, and later at Wheaton in 1854. Thus, in Illinois, Powell lived from his 17th to his 27th year. While he was still a boy in Ohio, he had experience of anti-slavery agitation, his father was a staunch abolitionist, who did not conceal his opinions, and as a result the son was so unfairly treated by his mates in the village school that he was removed from it, and for a time put under the care of a well-to-do elderly neighbor named Crookham, who taught gratuitously and irregularly in a log-house school and laboratory, as well as in the field. It was thus that young Powell made a beginning in scientific study and observation. When the move was made from Ohio, all the household goods were transported in a wagon in two carriages, one of the latter being driven by young John to Wisconsin. There the boy, when his father was away from home preaching, had the duty of conducting the farm, from which the family derived its principal support and of hauling farm produce to markets, five or six days to a trip, and twelve or more trips in a year. But his heart was in his studies, and in the winter of 1850 he went to Janesville, twenty miles from home, to attend school, working for his keep on a nearby farm. In 1852 he began school teaching, with half his pupils older than himself, and for the following nine years he alternately taught, studied, and traveled. He had the good fortune at the outset of this laborious period to fall in with intelligent school officials, but much of his teaching was done under narrowing conditions of isolation and privation. His college studies were varied. They were pursued at Illinois College, Jacksonville, 1855, to 1856, at Oberlin College, Ohio, 1858, where he studied chiefly botany, Latin, and Greek, and at Wheaton College in 1858. Powell was a naturalist at that time, fond of roaming, observing, and collecting. He had joined the State Society of Natural History in 1854, and in making an extensive collection of mollusca, he crossed most of the prairie states. In 1856, he traveled, a young fellow of 22, alone in his boat on the Mississippi. The next year, he descended the Ohio 
and the year after he followed the Illinois and Des Moines rivers. His collections brought him into relation with various colleges. He became secretary of the Illinois Society of Natural History, and his friends of that time found him an entertaining narrator, full of enthusiasm, humor, and philosophy. End of section one.